Now where I'm at, I'm up at uh, the Denton Farm Park before the show starts. And I'm just walking through the area where the people camp and sell assorted things. There's just, just about any kind of antique you can think of. Including antique engines. Just sitting on the ground, there's a bunch of hit and miss engines right there for sale. That is a 1916 Waterloo Boy tractor. That's something you won't see every day. Powered by a hit and miss engine. This is a Gibson rail tractor. You see in the rails, just take a couple pieces of iron bar and uh, you start bolting an engine in it. A Gibson from Seattle, Washington being restored and you can powered by an 18 horsepower Kohler. And there's the transmission gearing just taking drive belts off of the Kohler into a production gear to drive a tractor. And there's a lot of these made uh, from various manufacturers. Simplicity, uh, Iron Horse, The Economy, this comes to mind. Some of you probably recognize that logo. This is a Mogul International Harvester. 1916. Got the big hit and miss engine on it. This is a 40 horsepower Salmonson aircraft engine, a radial. Now if they're really old from World War One, instead of the pistons going up and down in the engine here, the entire engine will spin around and there's certain films you can you can see that. They're known as a rotary engine. And the engine spins around the crankshaft that's bolted onto the airplane and the propeller is bolted on to the engine housing and the whole thing spins. And they were either on 100% or they were off. And you can hear them, you hear that brrrp, brrrp. They're coming in for a landing, they're turning the engine on and off with the ignition. It's the only way they had to control it. Now this is 1903 Ajax. Gonna guess this, but this is a Maytag engine. A lot of people don't associate Maytag with engines. Here's the logo right here. Method of farming that uh, I really wouldn't want to contemplate too much. I delivered a lot of water in my day in a water carrier but uh, never horse drawn like these. Between the horse and the beginnings of the modern tractor era where we put uh, hit and miss engines on tractors. We had the steam era. It was very brief. And this is what they looked like. We've got a, a lot of them restored here at Denton and they crank them up and they run them. Steam them up and run them. After the steam era we had various tractors with rubberized bolted on steel wheels until oil pounds came up with the idea of putting on the uh, pneumatic tire on a tractor and the, uh, the the tractor tires we know of today were born and Goodyear gave him a million dollars for that and uh, he opened up a dealership there in uh, Winter Garden, Florida. Of course they restore these tractors the new condition 1926 Minneapolis later became Minneapolis Moline this is an Avery the first tractor I ever bought was an Avery it was uh, two hundred dollars and I grew or I tried to grow a crop of peppers with it this uh, tractor here of course is, is not that And here we have a B.F. Avery. Avery actually started out in the 1860s with the owner in Andersonville Prison, Civil War, uh, drawing out 
the plans for a, an advanced cedar versions of which we still use today and they made all kinds of farm implements that were way ahead of their time and uh, when he died of course the, uh, the people who took the company over we went into the tractor era proper and it was the most unlucky tractor company of all probably because just about the time they'd come out with a new design something would happen uh, they had one when the bull weevil epidemic hit and then one when the 1929 stock market crash and then when they came out with this the after the the uh, World War II the uh, uh, grain prices crashed and uh, you can hardly sell a new tractor and of course every time something like that happened the company would have to be reorganized and uh, eventually it was just sold off but they were way ahead of their time like I said I cleared five acres with one of these and grew a pepper crop when I was uh, 18 or 19 and I didn't know anything about peppers or marketing or anything so I had about the same results as uh, Avery did but uh, Everybody sold these, even uh, you could buy them in the Montgomery Ward catalog at one time. This is the site of a former airfield, and uh, uh, there's over a thousand, there's a thousand eighty some odd tractors registered that came in, in addition to the ones that stay here for the show. That's every year from uh, June 30th to July the 4th. And this was what saw in logs in the early 1900s in tail if not the uh, hit or miss engine and you'd have a steam engine sitting there garden master sitting next here to a economy next to a speed X 1917 Sears wood saw you could order that out of the Sears catalog and it'd come to you just like just like that and uh, Keith Gardner has restored this engine this is your Ford flathead engine that went in the Model A and uh, Variations of which are still used today, all the principles. And nothing has really changed that much if you think about it hard. We always seem to wind up back with Mrs. Matson at one of these events. Uh, we're embossing these emblems for the tractor show and glass. And of course, there's the jewelry that we make. All encased. Of course, there's 